Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to building a better redstone computer. Last time, we made a few small tweaks to our cache decoder, and we also did some basic setup with flags. We're not entirely done with flags yet, though. I mean, we have them, but we're still not doing anything with them. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. We're going to finish up our work with flags, and hopefully, with a little bit of luck, by the end of this, we should have a complete working flag system, and we should be able to, quote, program our computer to do different things based on the flags. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort of handle the final output of our AOU that we're not doing anything with. We're handling the carry out and the uh, shifter output, but we're not handling underflow. This one right here. And really, we're going to want to treat this the same way we treat the carry and the same way we treat the shifting out the other way. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a bus going along this way. What I'm ultimately going to do is I'm going to try and hook this up to our big giant OR gate here, because this is an OR gate. If the carry out is on, or we've shifted out, either out from the top bit or out from the very bottom bit, then this flag, our carry flag, should be on. So to do this, I'm going to have to go down this way a bit, and I think I'm going to have to go out one more. I don't think I'll be able to make it otherwise. Will I? Let me test. Yeah, no, because then there's this diagonal thing, and there's not really a very good answer to that. I mean, I guess I could move this up and replace those with half slabs. In fact, I could move this up and replace those with half slabs. Okay! Ladies and gentlemen, you get to see Crazy Benny live, in person, and in action. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up one like this, replace all these with half slabs to save one block doesn't really matter anyways, but hey, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be Benny, now would I? So let's see, how should I stack this? Okay, I think this slab, I'm going to use H pass 1, so that should be position 1, if I you just actually double check to make sure I really did. Good. And position 2, I want to go down, this should be position 2, so H pass 2. 1? Okay, that's not right. So this is going to be HPOS 2. I'm going to get creative, fly over here, and this should be HPOS 1. There we go. Okay, now if I stack 7 down, there we go. I should now... Oh, I don't actually need that, but that's okay. I should now be able to do this. And there. Does it actually make any difference? At all? No, not really. We're using this block anyways, but hey, <laughs> now we're doing it. So cool. Now if I break this temporarily, you'll see this goes up far enough to reach our torch, which really is all that matters. The fact that it doesn't go all the way up to the top doesn't matter because we're not doing anything with that anyways. So cool. Now, I just need to... Well, really, now we just need to bust this. We have the, all the different flags buzzing to the carry, so now this is going to be our carry flag. Our, well, our inverted carry flag, but the carry flag nonetheless. Yeah, there's not really a better way to do this as far as I can tell. I mean, I guess I could try and get creative with repeater, but I don't really see the need to, so uh, I'm not going to bother. So cool. Now we have the carry flag down here. If I bust it around this way, we will have the zero flag, actually. In fact, let me get power to the very top to make sure I really am reaching everything. So down here is the zero flag. This is as far as it reaches like this, so from here on, I'm going to have to repeat it. Oh, there you go. I was wondering why that wasn't working. And cool. So now we have the carry flag and the zero flag. And there's one more flag that I'm going to be interested in having for all of this. So, for our final flag, 
we want to know if whatever number the AOU has output is negative or not. And this is actually really easy and straightforward to do. All you have to do is look at this uppermost bit of whatever the AOU output is. If it's on, the number is negative. If it's off, it's not. Very, very easy test to do. Unfortunately, the wiring is going to be a little bit tricky because we have to take the power from this particular redstone wire right here. Not here, because this will only have a signal strength of 1 in some cases, and, well, this, yeah, might not reach there. And as you can see, the wiring is already a little bit cramped around there. So really, there's two options. One, you could change this up a bit and take power like this. And now, it's powering both the zero flag and this will be our new negative flag. We could say bus it this way, blocking it off here, and then continue downwards with the rest of our flag somewhere around this direction. That's a perfectly valid option, but there's actually a better way to do it. What you can do, take advantage of this block, take power out of here, and power like this. And this achieves effectively the same thing, this block's in the same position, but I'm one higher signal strength than I would be otherwise. And that is going to help. Maybe not necessarily a lot, but it's going to help. So now I'm going to bust down this way a bit. The reason is, over here I have a little bit more space to do this whole spiral staircase thing. And, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. And actually, that's one too early. Forgive me, I'm being an eager beaver. But that's okay. Here we are. I do want to go ahead and power this. In fact, why not? Let's power it from right here. I'm going to love this little extra hump. I can already tell. But anyways. So yeah, now I can start heading downwards a bit. And I could... There's a lot of ways you could approach this, really. There's, There's a lot of ways you could approach this. But I'm going to do it like this. Actually, I wasn't being an eager beaver. I could do it here, because this won't interfere. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I got my directions confused or something. So yeah. Now I can start heading downwards. All the way down. And with a little bit of luck, I should have pretty solid amount of signal strength by the time I reach... I'm gonna have to move this slightly, but that's okay. Yes! Okay. So I have a good solid amount of signal strength here, that's good, and I have plenty of space for my right accumulator bot. So, in fact, let me move the sign for this, because otherwise... There. Right... Accumulator. Here I'm going to power like this, and just like that, I can now not go through there because of that wire, but I can go out one around here, and what do you know, now I have negative along with all my other flags, just like this. In fact, I can even label them. This is negative, this is zero, and this is carry. Invert. Perfect. We now have all of our flags being generated and bussed to appropriate locations, even if it's a bit uh, inter interesting and creative in some of the ways we're doing it. So very cool. So, you might be wondering, alright Benny, why did we just spend all this time creating these flags? good do they do us? Who cares? Well, let me show you. But first, I need to make a small adjustment to our zero flag, because I just realized you know, it should be on if the output is zero. So, uh, yeah. Because it's on, it's zero. And, yeah. Kind of important. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a, a basic problem. I'm going to input 
you guessed it, 5 and 3. So I'm going to put in 5 here. And in the accumulator input, I'm going to put in 3. I think. I can't actually do that, though, can I? Because otherwise it would be... Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Using my new favorite feature of the computer, I'm going to use my tower to input those. Quickly write to the accumulator. Cool. So now I have three saved in the accumulator. And now I'm going to allow the accumulator through. So that should be allowing three. Good. And I should allow data through. Which... There. Now I've saved five as the input. So cool. Now I can delete this. That way I don't forget it later and wonder, hey, why is my computer not working? Oh, cool. It looks like we are successfully inputting 5 and 3. So I should be adding them together. If I go to the output, I should somewhere be seeing an 8. There we are. 8. Cool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually change this to subtraction. I want to do 5 minus 3. I know, those of you who don't know what I'm doing are just wondering, what am I doing? Is this like a filibuster or something? No. You'll see in just a few seconds. And uh, actually, I'm going to switch this and make a negative, or invert A, so not A. So now I should be doing 5, which is the data input, minus 3, which is the accumulator input, and that should get me 2. Yes, I can do basic math. But look at the flags here. Right now, the carry is on. And 0 and negative are off. Kind of interesting. Well, maybe not really, but, you know. So you might say, what if, you know, there's like a comparison. So this is on if A is greater than B. You know, it's a reasonable thing to think. So, you know, if I switched it around and allowed A and not D, well, in this case, it should be the other way around. See? Negative. Because in this case, A is less than B. And if I input the same thing, 0 and 0, I should... Hmm. Something fishy is going on here. Right. I have to allow not something, because the carry-in is on. Okay. Carry-in off. Now I have 0 and 0, adding 0 plus 0, that's 0. So, this might mean A is equal to B. And see, just like that, we can use the carry, well, among other flags, the carry, the 0, and the negative flag to do comparisons, as long as we're in subtract mode. If we subtract two numbers, we can test if A is greater than B, A is less than B, or A is equal to B. Just like that. And that's really the biggest usage of flags. We now have a built-in comparison feature for the computer, and we really, we're not really even paying for it. We're just using information the computer already generates in the ALU. And that is awesome. And of course, there's the added bonus that in a few special cases, these flags have their own uses, but uh, that's another story. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and delete these, because I that was just for demonstration. And yeah, very cool. So, earlier, I said, with a little bit of luck, we might be able to actually do a little bit of interesting programming with the flags before the end of this video. Remember me saying that? As it turns out, I am a nincompoop, <laughs> because apparently when I went and built the cache and that replaced where I was going to do the control unit, I forgot to update my notes. So my notes are saying the control unit was already built, and yeah, I'm just a little confused at the moment, apparently, so sorry about that. We will not be able to do programming of any kind in this video, because we have an absolutely ludicrous amount of controls for this computer. I mean, just the inputs of the ALU, we can either allow 
the accumulator or the inverted accumulator or both or neither. Same thing for the data. You have a whole bunch of different controls for the ALU, like the carry in, the flood carry. Are we using the OR function? Are we shifting left, shifting right, both, all at the same time? Which is actually a genuine option. Which memory are we using? Are we using any of the registers, all of the registers? Are we reading from them, writing to them? Same thing for the cache. Are we eating or writing from a cache location? Are we writing to the cache from memory? <laughs> are we sending the cache out to memory? There's just... <laughs> There's a whole outrageous amount of things to manage with this com whole computer that we have right now. So our next goal is going to be to try and cut down on that complexity a little bit by building the control unit. And that's going to be the topic of the next several videos because it's not exactly a trivial task. Ultimately, we're trying to get all of those controls I just mentioned to you all usable with a single byte. <laughs> that's right, one byte to rule them all. That will be our next project. Thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time. Greetings. This is Benny from the present? But I mean, by the time you're watching this, I've, the present's already passed, so it's Benny from the past? Well, well, whatever. This is Time Paradox, Benny, and uh, I'm here just to point out a small detail since I know some people like to really look into my designs. When I have the flags arranged like this, really, this is just a convenient way to group them until I get the rest of the control unit built. We're not really going to have a good thing to do with these without the rest of the control unit, so, uh, yeah. This is just how they're going to be for now. They're probably going to be organized slightly differently as we go on, but, uh, yeah. Just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. Now I really will see you next time.